Hi, I'm Peter Cummins. I'm chair of the UK Personal Construct Psychology Association, known as PCPA. This video is the third in a series that PCA is producing to demonstrate the contribution that personal construct psychology can make to understanding people. In video three, we aim to show how a completed PEG looks. I'm really pleased to have Professor Harry Proctor, who developed this methodology, to show us exactly what a completed PEG would look like. Thanks very much, Peter. OK, well, in the last video, we looked a, a little bit at an example of yourself, wasn't it, with mm. your two hypothetical sons, A and B. Mm. And that's a case of one person filling a PEG in. Mm. But of course, we can get the actual perceivers on the left uh, to uh, each of them to to fill in uh, the peg themselves, so that we've got their actual constructions, perceptions, if you like. That can be done in conjoint session, in an interview with all of them and asking them, right. which is useful. People hear about the different people. Uh, in a session, one can hand out. A piece of paper and then put it together oneself either in the session or subsequently so there's a few choices there and a, a nice example I've found is from Virginia Woolf's excellent uh, novel written in 19 or published in 1925 Mrs Dalloway this uh, uh, novel is uh, part of a, um, a method in in novel writing at that time known as the stream of consciousness and that makes it particularly suitable because uh, Virginia Woolf t talks about people's thoughts, uh, which is a very rich uh, uh, text to draw things from. One can use these qualitative grids and per perceiver element grid in particular uh, to analyse not just uh, psychological research situations or clinical situations, uh, uh, one can use them in uh, looking at novels, plays, any, any kind of material really uh, of that kind. So um, it makes a nice example. And uh, the, what I did was I went through uh, the text and chose all examples of the three characters or four characters that I've chosen um, and looked at how they uh, respond to each other, how they see each other, that sort of thing, and right. how they see themselves. Now in this uh, uh, novel there's if you like a main plot and that's Mrs Dalloway herself, Clarissa Dalloway who used to have a boyfriend called Peter Walsh and uh, but married Richard Dalloway who's a sort of senior government sort of person if I remember right. But we're not going to look at that plot although that has been analysed by my colleagues in in Milan, Valeria Ugazio and uh, Stella uh, Guarneri uh, uh, Stella wrote a PhD, in fact, looking at the main plot, using a very similar methodology. They call them, rather than constructs, they call them semantic polarities, uh, which have some differences, but they're a fairly similar idea. In the subplot here, we have a character called Septimus. Now, bear in mind this is post-First World War, so Septimus was fighting in, in it Italy, uh, and uh, is traumatised. He, he had a friend called Evans and Evans was blown up basically right in front of his face. So he was traumatised. We talk, They called it shell shock in those days mm. or battle neurosis. Nowadays we call it PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So if, if I remember right, he's having flashbacks and he's really, really quite uh, disturbed. Um, after the war, uh, he uh, landed up in this Italian village and met his wife-to-be, who's called Rezia or Lucrezia, uh, brings her back to London. The, po uh, the plot of the novel occurs all in one day in, I think it's 1923 or 4, uh, and uh, these characters, Septimus and Rezia, a couple dealing with quite a difficult situation. They've seen their family doctor, who's called Dr. Holmes, and I've put, uh, I've made three pegs of this. We'll only look at the first one. Right. The first one is the sort of initial situation, if you like. It develops. I thought we wouldn't spoil the novel for people by talking <laughs> about what the subsequent events, uh, but it's, a, it's certainly well worth a read. It starts with, uh, or the, the part of the subplot starts um, 
with the two, the couple are sitting in Regent's Park in London. And uh, poor old Septimus is quite disturbed. I can't remember exactly, but I think he sees maybe some army people or something, but he, he's clearly very, very much preoccupied with difficult memories and confusion. Uh, Rezia, his wife, uh, feels quite embarrassed. Well, we can begin to look at the peg now to see in more detail how, how they're experiencing things. So if we look at, uh, at the, again, a three by three peg, just like we did in the, in the uh, previous video. So we can see that Septimus is feeling quite suicidal. He says, I will kill myself. And he also describes feelings of kind of numbness in relation to these memories. He says, I, I felt indifferent, I feel indifferent about the fact that my, my friend was killed. Mm. He, in the, in, uh, on the park bench, as I said, he's uh, saying these things and his wife is very preoccupied with him being noticed as being disturbed. So if we look at Rezia's view of her husband, she says, people must notice, they must see him, suppose they've heard him, suppose they've heard him saying you'll kill yourself. So her construing seems very much around shame or uh, embarrassment and pre wanting to be, it to be private. Now she's actually, uh, they've already seen Dr. Holmes um, and Dr. Holmes has decided to formulate the case, as we would say nowadays, mm. uh, that actually there's very, very little wrong with this young man because right. he describes, looking at this first column, which is all descriptions of Septimus by himself, by his wife and Dr. Holmes, he says nothing whatever seriously the matter with him, he's just a little out of sorts. Okay. And, but Rezia takes this, isn't, and this is a very good example of how responsible a professional is for any statements they make about how it might be interpreted, not just mm. by the patient themselves. And incidentally, it's rather interesting that Dr. Holmes doesn't consider Rezia, there's a blank. And as I often say, blank cells in a peg, which means that we don't know what what the construing is, or right. somebody's not telling us, or somebody's suppressing it, or a number of reasons. But he's just left it blank, and one feels that perhaps along with medical practice in those days, pathology difficulties were seen very much sort of within the skin of, of, of the individual person. Mm -hmm. right. And any consideration, sort of relational consideration that we put so much emphasis on now, um, was not appearing there. Rezia takes from what Dr. Holmes has said that there's nothing wrong and says, well, then he must be very cowardly. It's mm. cowardly for, for a man to say he would kill himself. Mm. Uh, and she goes on to say he's selfish, for he's not ill. Yeah. Right. So there's this very crucial professional construct of ill versus well. Right. Of course, a very useful construct for illness. But when it's applied to psychological disturbance or emotions, it begins to get stretched a little bit, I think, according to uh, personal construct theory and the kind of frameworks that we nowadays use to understand situations. Along with uh, um, what Dr. Holmes says, Rezia, if we look at the third column, we can see how the characters see Dr. Holmes. We don't have anything about himself, but uh, Rezia says, he told me to make your husband take an interest in things out, outside himself. So I think we can read that as a somewhat, you know, he needs to pull himself Except together. together. <laughs> that was yeah, exactly the it. phrase that was going through my head. <laughs> yes. but it's a professional version of that, yes. But she likes him and she says, what a kind man, what a good Goodness. man he is. And that's rather interesting. I, I will say one thing from the next peg, which is when they go and see the psychiatrist, Dr. Bradshaw, uh, uh, out, and out of that interview, Rezia, the wife says, uh, very much a different thing, a, 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 very, a very unkind man, right. not, a, not a nice man. So and so then we have so She's rating her professional advisors very much on their personality, whether they, they're nice or yes. not, which is, uh, of course, a very important thing. It's a very particular kind of construing. Mm. 
and it's precisely what Septimus is doing when he talks about Dr. Holmes, because he says he's a damn fool, Absolutely. I won't see him. Yes. And this, once you stumble, human nature is on you. I yes, now that right. comes through, you know, in fact it comes through in all three of the pegs that we took, that, um, when, when he, he talks about both Dr. Holmes and Dr. Bradshaw on these terms, and he seems to have an idea, and I can't but think that it's connected with his wartime experiences, you know, they're appalling experiences that people, and as we know, pe pe soldiers would come mm. back from the trenches and they'd never tell their families ever anything again for the rest mm. of their lives, you mm. know. Um, but he's got this idea that human nature itself is, if you stumble, if you, oh, if you show a right. weakness, okay. I think it means, that's right. my understanding, then people will grind you down and sort of right. oppress you even more. So once you stumble, I, he means once you show any sort of weakness, human nature is so. in on you. I right. think that's what it means. That's my memory. And then the middle column that we haven't really talked about yet is Septimus's view of Retzia, that she's taken her ring yes. off, so the marriage is over. Well, let's so. go to her self-concept first, the middle, squ middle square, right. which says, far rather that this is Virginia Woolf, the novelist talking, but she's saying of Retzia, far rather would she that he were dead. So he's now, she's now wishing that he was dead. Right. Uh, and he, she herself says, I could not sit beside him, that was in the park, I could not sit beside him when he stared so and made everything terrible. Right, so, so I'm ashamed of him. I it's think so. humiliating yeah. sitting beside this guy who's yeah. behaving in such a peculiar way. And, you know, she says, I am alone, and we've got yeah. to think that this poor woman has been dragged out of her cultural context. She's living mm. in, this, in this huge foreign city uh, with very little support. Uh -huh. And, of course, Septimus, to add to his stress and difficulty, notices she's taken her, her wedding ring off right. and concludes the marriage is over. So, you know, what's left for this young man? Right. So in this first peg, we've got a very quick but rich summary of how all three characters understand themselves and understand each yes. other. And what I always argue is that that's the core data. If you can find out how people are think, feeling, thinking, construing themselves and each other, that's, that's got more mileage in it than almost any other kind of clinical information. Right. So um, I, I like to, in workshops, I like to say, well, how would you approach this couple? And of course, nowadays we'd approach it, hopefully we would, in, in a much better way than sort of just minimising the thing. I mean, he, he's, he refers uh, Septimus to a psychiatrist, Dr. Bradshaw, and, you know, given that he's actively threatening to kill himself, no doubt is, uh, you, you know, the idea of going to um, a, a psychiatric hospital, which is what mm. Dr. Bradshaw advises, uh, may be the right course of action to prevent him harming right. himself. And that's the next peg that you're going to take us on to? Yes, yeah. well, I wasn't going to mention that, but... Ah, we, we, okay. um, I mean, that could, we could maybe in a future video, but right. um, I was going to just use this one at this point. But right. um, uh, what we certainly would do, what certainly, let's say, just speak for myself, I would be interested in both of them and I would be wanting to, uh, to look seriously at both their accounts. Uh, mm. uh, and I would also want to, you know, things are very dire for them at the moment, but I would want to assess when there's statements that the relationship is over, because I would regard the husband and wife relationship in this situation as the core group, if you like, or pair right. that is going to make <laughs> progress and sort these things out. If they're working together, if, if they really are saying we're going to split up, that's obviously a different thing. Hmm. But I would, you know, the thing about difficulties is they can get fed back into the situation and then people think, well, this can't be any good hmm. because it's experienced so awfully. But I would say, oh, well, what's, what's, uh, tell me about when you first met. That must have been amazing, you know, after the war and, the, you know, at last peace was declared, as it were. And, uh, you know, you met each other and you fell in love and you decided to come to London. What was it? Uh, tell me about that time in your life. Right. And that would be a way of bringing in more positive feeling. But it would also be a way of assessing, well, what is the strength here, you know, and find out what the constructs they're using of mm. a positive kind. Okay. I would want to feed them back an account, a, a formulation to them, a reflection. They talk about reflecting, uh, comment back, 
during the session and in, at the end of the session, saying, you know, it's not surprising really that things are as difficult as they are at the moment, uh, because, you know, you've been through a very serious experience in losing your friend and, and the appalling uh, thing there, and it's actually very common to have lots of unresolved feelings about that. I'd also say to match that, to balance it, to say to Rezio, and you're, you know, you're away from your family and your, your user support system, you're existing in a new culture and language and everything. And then I would want to say, would you be interested in doing some further work on this? The, the purpose of that being to empower them and to find good ways forward of dealing with the issues. Right. Of course, they're free to say, no, thank you. Mm. Uh, but nearly always when you give that kind of information, uh, that kind of reflection, people say, yes, please, you know. Mm. And very often, once you've contracted for therapy, as they say, technically, and once you've made an, a sort of agreement that you will work together, um, then uh, very often the next time you see them, because you've, you've now become, entered their system, as they say, as a very supportive uh, figure, like an avuncular figure, <laughs> if you like, if it's a male therapist, and uh, that, that in itself uh, tends to de-escalate uh, the situation. Right. So, to clarify, or to summarise, what we have here is all the work of Septimus in the first instance. So it's Septimus's view of on the top row, the top, yeah. and the next one is Septimus's view of what Retzia. No, thinks. no, no, no. This is Retzia's actual view. Okay. Yeah. Right. Unlike in the previous peg where we're absolutely. Using, that's why I wanted to clarify that's a nice that. Point. Yeah. Thanks for helping me to clarify that. So Retzia is actual words, and Dr. Holmes is actual words right. in the third row. So again, that shows the flexibility of PEG, that in the previous video, somebody was filling it out, in, well, in fact, it was me, was yes. filling it out entirely from my perspective. Yes, but guessing how but the others But guessing how the others. In this one, you're actually using real yeah. information. And both of them are very, very valuable Absolutely. tools. Right. Uh, I also say also, I've been talking about therapy, but a lot of people, this is a very uh, typical example of a psychiatric crisis. Mm. Uh, it could have been yesterday, quite honestly. It doesn't have to go back to early in the 20th century. Um, you know, soldiers coming back from war with disturbance is absolutely so mm. common that their relationships become disturbed. People don't understand what they went through. And so it's... Uh, also something that you could use in a crisis intervention team as you know very often nowadays there's, there's teams that do assessments and crisis, crisis mm. work and then it gets handed over to a different therapist. Mm. In my day we tended to do it all in one go. Um, so that, that uh, I think it's worth saying that the use of this, these to summarise a crisis situation. Thank you.